Hello out there in television land, we are back. My bride, Kathleen, and Hero, who we're going to talk about just a little bit later. Right? We'll be right back after this brief commercial message. Remember, you're watching It's Your Health, your leader in healthcare information. We'll be right back. Back to the first segment of It's Your Health, the fastest 30 minutes in television history. And this is Hero, a little story here. My wife wanted a dog for her Valentine Day slash anniversary. I begged for a dog. And so we've got a Hero here, right? And of course, because of that, I was in the doghouse for a little bit, but... Not completely, because around Hero's neck was this beautiful necklace, this beautiful diamond necklace. You liked it, didn't you? Yes, but it sort of was yellowish. Why is that? The diamond was yellow? Sort of. Well, uh, that's because it had a lot of carrots. Oh, brother. <laughs> so uh, maybe we should go on to headlines I now. think so. Okay. That was a very poor joke. <laughs> okay. And the diamond is really perfectly white, by the way. Okay. Let's, uh, by the way, our headlines are going to concentrate on COVID. We're going to put him down just a little bit, okay? So, we'll talk to him a little bit later. Okay. Yeah, the first, uh, se first segment will deal with strictly COVID stuff since we're in this business right now. We didn't want to completely go over COVID because I have COVID fatigue just like everyone else does. But we're going to hit some high points as long, uh, along with the other medical topics that we generally cover. Okay, headline one. Do I still need to get vaccinated if I've already had COVID? Probably yes. Uh, we feel as though the natural immunity will last for up to three months. Uh, so you would want to get a vaccination uh, to protect you later on. But the big thing about COVID is you name any disease, I can go to the library, I can look up past stuff. This stuff with COVID is brand new and we are writing it and rewriting it every week. And so it gets very frustrating for both us and you. We'll do the best we can. Next headline, the risk of death is higher with the COVID variant than with the original strain. Yes, un unfortunately the variant is about 50% more contagious and 50% more lethal. And of course, the big question is the uh, vaccine going to protect us against the, uh, the variants that are out there. Again, we're writing this as we go along. So as a caveat, make sure you talk with your healthcare provider before listening to us here, because things change rather quickly. Yes, they do. Um, and if you read the news, you can see that they change rather quickly. And third headline, less than 1% chance of reinfection with SARS COVID-2. Correct. So if you have the uh, unfortunate case of getting the COVID-19 infection, there is a very little chance that you're going to get reinfected, at least short term, because you're going to have natural antibodies that are in your bloodstream. That we can measure, by the way. So some patients come to us and say, you know, I think I had this illness. We can actually do a blood test and say, yes, you did, and you have antibodies, or no, you didn't. It's the 51st annual Earth Day. All right, well, hit me with a couple of questions here. Okay. How long does it take a disposable diaper to decompose in a landfill? That's assuming it's dirty. Uh, I would dirty say or clean? It's going to take a long time, I have a feeling, because there's maybe some plastic involved. So how long? I don't know, a couple years? 550 years. Wow. We should get back to the old time way. I think so. 
How long does it take paper products to decompose? Uh, rather quickly, maybe a couple of years. No, just two to six weeks. Not bad. How about styrofoam? This is a good one. How long does it take styrofoam? I don't think it ever decomposes. You're right. Styrofoam never decomposes. Get rid of it. Uh, how about foil? Tin well, foil. It, uh, aluminum foil. Aluminum yeah. foil. <laughs> that probably doesn't decompose because it's a metal, I would guess. You're right. It never decomposes. And finally, the average American generates more than four pounds of trash daily. Is that true or false? That seems a lot to me. Four pounds a day per person? Uh, that seems a lot. It's true. Wow. I, I didn't do so well on uh, Earth Day stuff. Maybe we should yeah. move along to something that maybe you know more about. Puppies. All right, here we, we go. We love talking about puppies. And we want to talk about what not to feed your puppies. Okay, so this time I'm going to question you. Here you're going to check on the screen the, uh, the food and whether you can give it to your dog or not and what happens. Are you ready? Number one. All right. How about chocolate there, sweetheart? Chocolate has caffeine in it and other things in it that, well, such as theobromine and especially dark chocolate. It's all bad for your dog. Sugar-free products. Many of them have xylitol. Most sugar-free gum has it, and now some peanut butter has it. They're, it's very dangerous to your dog. How about grapes? Grapes and raisins, and nobody knows why, but they will destroy your dog's kidneys. Oh, that doesn't sound good. How about onions and garlic? Onions and garlic are in everything, but they're not good for dogs. They affect their red blood cells, and they lead to lethargy and weakness. And how about a little glass of wine? No, only give your dog water. Wine or any kind of liquor can affect their brain and their liver. Very dangerous. Not good, not good. So, so we want to stay away from that. And it's very common sometimes to give table food to uh, dogs that are looking as though their last meal is yeah, there. Yeah, like, like you do. <laughs> yes. Like you always want to give a dog a, a treat. Hero never asks for anything, so. No, that's true. Well, let's talk about diet changes for people now that we've talked about diet changes for dogs. Well, this is particularly with regards to women. And uh, women have special needs, and calcium is one of them, of course, for strong bones. The next thing you need to do is make sure you have enough protein because you can lose muscle mass, especially postmenopausally. Mm, not mentioning any names. And then the other thing that we often forget is our nervous system loves B vitamins, and we sometimes lack uh, necessary B complex vitamins, particularly B12. I occasionally will run into a patient who is in the nursing home, they have dementia, guess what, they have a B12 deficiency uh, and could have perhaps been uh, put off with getting dementia had the B12 deficiency been picked up and treated. And that uh, B12 is for red blood cells and also for brain function. Absolutely. Well, that's important. Yes, it is. Moving right along. Oh, moving right along to osteopenia, not osteoporosis. You have normal bone health, and then once we age, particularly after menopause, the bones can get thinner. They can become a little weaker, but it is not actually the bone loss itself. So you have normal bone, you have osteoporosis, osteopenia is in the middle, can be determined by a DEXA imaging scan. It's Which a, doesn't hurt. It's a picture of your spine and your hips and can guide you as to what you can do to maintain your bone health. Very important. Spinach and broccoli, dried beans and salmon, they're all good for you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then talking about bone health, let's talk about a new way of managing vitamin D. Northeastern Pennsylvania, virtually everyone, everyone is deficient in vitamin D, which is going to translate to proper bone health. And there is an over-the-counter uh, medication called Ra 
Plisa, you can see that on your screen, 50,000 units of D3, a delicious chewable wafer, no prescription required. Uh, so if you're uh, out there in television land, I would consider picking that up. And uh, you can also, by the way, get a, a vitamin D level drawn to see if you're either high or low. So okay, I, I'm out of breath. Yeah, looks like we've covered everything. Wow, that's because we managed our time. No, that's because you told me not to talk. Sweetheart. You told me to keep quiet. That was at home, not here, okay? Oh, so okay. let's get that straight. We'll be right back after this brief commercial message. Remember, you're watching It's Your Health, Your Leader in Healthcare Information. We'll be right back. Welcome back to It's Your Health. We're so glad that you're with us. And guess what? I did something for you. Uh, all right, I'm sitting down. <laughs> I made you a brownie. Do you want to see? Do you know where our kitchen is, by the way? <laughs> Here, look. I made a brown E. Isn't that cute? Yes, it was uh, <laughs> a, a segment in which... Uh, the uh, patients who were in a dementia unit were uh, presented us with brownies, so you can have your own brownie and not. So make... I brought a brownie. Very good. And That's it's... about as close as I get to cooking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let's get to our headlines then. Our first headline, of course, has to do with COVID. Statewide mask mandates reduced COVID hospitalizations. There's no doubt uh, that masks are going to matter. Do you know that this year, after doing 40 years of medicine, I have not seen a case of the flu. Why is that? Oh, because true. we're doing social distancing, because we're wearing masks. So masks uh, are, are very important. And, and keep in mind that you don't know who you're interacting with out there. And as we'll get into later, there are people out there carrying the virus and don't even know they carry it. Okay, next headline. At least 50% of COVID transmission is from asymptomatic individuals. Isn't that crazy? I mean, you could be around someone who's perfectly fine, no fever, no cough, no nothing, and they can transmit the virus to you. 50% of people out there have no symptoms. Okay, well, let's get away from the COVID for a minute and talk about something else that is supposed to be helpful when it comes to COVID and is also be helpful if you have a cold, uh, zinc. Right, well, for a while there, anyone who was hospitalized or was in uh, nursing homes, personal care homes, people at home who had COVID virus, we prescribed them zinc. Zinc was supposed to help your immune system fight the virus. Uh, it's been known for a while. Uh, we would try to avoid uh, zinc intranasally because sometimes that can cause problems in your nose. But the zinc pills are out there. I wouldn't take them forever, but uh, if you feel a cold or a flu coming on, maybe take a few zinc pills and it might help you. They're good for colds, wound healing, if you have diarrhea, if you have macular degeneration, zinc has been shown to be helpful in those areas. And. I don't know about you, but we have seen our share of allergies this time of year. Uh, people have a lot of issues with uh, eye uh, allergies, and I'd like you to look at this on the screen. It's called Alloway. It's the first and only FDA-approved, over-the-counter, preservative-free antihistamine eye drops. Relieves symptoms at the source and works in minutes, lasts up to 12 hours, and it's the original prescription strength, Alloway for itchy allergic eyes. And is eyes. that for if you have an allergy? Of the eyes, you know, if they're burning, itchy, red, tearing kind of thing. Okay. Here's something that certainly I've had to deal with over the years, and that's with thyroid problems. Um, some of the signs of thyroid, extreme fatigue, brain fog, digestive issues, mood problems, weight gain or weight loss, you wouldn't think that that would have anything to do with your thyroid, but it certainly does. 
Yeah, check the list up there and you might see symptoms that are out there that you may be suffering from. Thyroid is very common, very common in women. And the thyroid is sort of the battery gland. Uh, you really can't live without a thyroid. And so when it's low, so you might be low. Uh, thyroid disorder is detrimental to your life. So make sure that it's okay. You want me to keep going? Yeah, I didn't, the, I, the, the silence was deafening. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that. The silence was deafening. Okay, colon cancer screening. This is a big one. Um, what is colon cancer screening? What do you do for colon cancer? Nobody likes to get colon cancer screened. Well, it's uh, the top three cancers in our area, breast, lung, and colon, uh, easily screened for. Uh, the standard, of course, would be a colonoscopy, which, of course, requires a two-day uh, fast, a little bit of a prep, uh, being put to sleep. Uh, it's inconvenient. There are some risks to it, but it is the gold standard. It can detect a uh, polyp or a polyp that can go on to uh, have cancer. If you're not interested in that, you can also consider a Cologuard test where they mail you a box and you do your duty in the box and send it back. They analyze the stool for the possibility of uh, DNA type or uh, the cells that would suggest cancer of your colon. It's not 100%, some false positives. Uh, the pro of that is you don't have to go through the prep and go through the business of a colonoscopy. The con is it's not as a detectable in terms of it's not the gold standard for detecting colon cancer and of course you could have a polyp that is precancerous that the cola guard would not of course figure out so well I didn't want to have a colonoscopy so I went by way of the cola guard and I failed so I had to have a colonoscopy anyway yeah so I would just, you know, go for the gold and go for the gold standard. Uh, and what about the fecal occult blood test? That was the old time way of, of uh, checking for s blood in your stool, which of course could be due to anything. You could have a half cooked hamburger and it could be positive for uh, uh, blood. Uh, that's probably the least reliable, but it's out there anyway. Okay, so what would you recommend if, if a patient came to you and said, which way do I go, doctor? Well, as usually the case, it depends. I think if there's a family history of colon cancer, you've got to go for the colonoscopy. I think if you're having abdominal symptoms, you should uh, have a colonoscopy. Uh, I, I don't like guessing in this business and uh, flying in a fog, so I would go for the test that will give us more bang for the buck. And I think you said something really important. It's important to know your family's health history uh, because you don't know what kind of minds are out there if you don't know what the history of your family is. So that's very important. My mother came, she was uh, adopted, so we don't know anything about her. Yeah, that's a good point, sweetheart. And uh, I've always told patients that you have to pick good parents. And with that in mind, uh, we are going to close out our second segment. Uh, remember, you're watching It's Your Health. We're, of course, your leader in healthcare information. Check with your healthcare provider before doing any of the things that we do here on It's Your Health. We'll be right back after this brief commercial message. Welcome back to the third segment of It's Your Health. And for those of you who are fans of Samsung Productions, you witnessed the 25th anniversary of It's Your Health over the past 25 years. And now you are about to witness, sweetheart, you're on. You brought that for my birthday. How nice. Well, she's a fan of the tea biscuits from Snaps, so mm -hmm. it's not a cake, I'm sorry, or icing, but uh, go right ahead. 
And uh, out there in television land, I can hear them singing happy birthday. So. Oh, you're not going to sing? Um, no. No. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll sing tonight. All right. <laughs> and what will make you sing? Let's do our headlines. Okay. The headlines are about COVID, remember. Our first one is some symptoms persist for at least six months in many hospitalized patients. Again, it illustrates just how horrible this virus is. We call it COVID long. Some patients will, even though the virus has cleared and they may feel better, they may still have a cough, shortness of breath. There might be a brain fog, tired, weakness, fatigue. It can hold on to you for a longer period of time than you like, and uh, it can be devastating. Some patients may never fully recover. Oh my goodness. Next headline. Neurologic and psychiatric consequences after COVID are more common than with other illnesses or with influenza. Again, where have you heard that you had the flu or a cold and you still feel sick uh, and never get better? I mean, I guess that happens, but with the COVID, it happens more often than not, particularly if you're in the ICU or you had issues with regards to what we call a metabolic encephalopathy, like if you were out of it for a while or needed to be intubated. It's just a, a horrible, horrible thing. Wow. And the third headline, these studies report that COVID vaccines are effective in healthcare workers. Well, of course, that's the hope, and we can translate that to everyone out there in television land. As we are all getting vaccinated, we are seeing a little bit of a dip uh, in the uh, COVID-19 infections. We've not really seen them in the nursing homes to a great deal, the personal care homes, the elderly. Well, then let's talk about something else and something that's very important for all of us, and that's the causes of heart disease. And heart disease is a major killer, isn't it? It's probably the number one, uh, stroke, heart attack, cardiovascular disease. Look at this screen and you're gonna find out some of the things that you can do to lower your risk of having cardiac disease. First of all, believe it or not, dental issues are a big problem. Gum disease. So people who have gum disease are generally going to have more problems with cardiovascular health. Believe it or not, shift work, working at night or irregular hours uh, stresses you to the point that your internal body clock gets offset, uh, particularly with regards to sleep that we'll get into a little bit later. But again, shift work can predispose you to more problems with your heart. Uh, traffic delays. <laughs> people, wow. Of course, I hate driving anymore because people are angry, they're depressed, uh, and it, it is not pleasurable driving anymore. So traffic delays and that aggravation will put up your pulse and your blood pressure and have you curse and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, that's uh, not good. That is not good. Uh, something that you don't think of very often is early menopause. Uh, as an aside, why do women live longer than men? Because they have that estrogen effect that protects them against uh, heart disease. However, if you have an early menopause, you're going to lose that protective effect and then start reverting towards uh, male health risks. So early menopause is a problem. For That's me. Were you really early? Mm -hmm. hmm. Uh, snoring. What does that have to do with things? That's him. Snoring. Uh, brings up the suggestion of obstructive sleep apnea, where your oxygen levels fall while you sleep, stressing your heart, stressing your cardiovascular system, higher risk of stroke and heart attack. If out there in television land someone snores, they are now doing, because of COVID, home sleep studies. It's a no-brainer. You stay in your bed, you get tested for sleep apnea. It's a tricky, silent disease that is underdiagnosed and obviously undertreated. Uh, get a home and sleep. And dangerous. Yes, it is. So get a home sleep study and uh, make sure you don't have that illness. Hepatitis C. Again, this is a chronic liver infection. It still gives you a high risk of uh, uh, cardiovascular events. Uh, all baby boomers should be uh, screened for hepatitis C, which is simply, a of course, a blood test. And uh, when getting into this segment a little bit uh, more, 
when you uh, are not getting good sleep, we talked about shift work, we talked about obstructive sleep apnea, again, it ties into cardiovascular health, and an unhappy marriage. <laughs> it's, I should live forever. That's uh, right. <laughs> so unhappy marriage, uh, if you're malcontented or lonely, uh, these things can uh, bring on uh, early diseases, I guess, across the board. So. When you're talking about sleep, you know, they recommend seven to nine hours. They don't actually think you should sleep more than that. And they don't think you should sleep less than that. They think seven to nine are the magic hours. And last but not least, of course, is belly fat. Uh, they found that belly fat has uh, certain characteristics to it than other fat that can lead on to heart disease. Uh, I call what we just went through this winter, the COVID-15, just like the freshman 15, everyone this winter and with COVID has gained about 15 pounds. So now that spring has sprung, maybe you can get out there and, uh, and lower that. Block the dog. Exactly. Okay, you ready for the last? Yes. Can you really die of a broken heart? Broken heart syndrome, which is in fact a real thing. Right. Well, is it uh, was it Debbie Reynolds who died within a day of her Carrie Fisher, her daughter, her daughter. Yep. And we have a couple of patients with this broken heart syndrome. Apparently, you can release tremendous amounts of adrenaline out of stress or shock. Uh, it can uh, cause your heart to fail, believe it or not. And yeah. it's mostly women. Mostly women, and you end up in the hospital, and they find out you don't have a blockage, and they have a term for this disease, and you recover, believe it or not, uh, almost completely. So uh, it's out there, and uh, I, I'm not sure what the take home message is except to avoid shock and stress. Yeah, you've watched your blood pressure. Um, depression and anxiety causes a release of this stress, and there you go. Well, it's a good thing we don't have stress and anxiety uh, in our house. Absolutely <laughs> not. So blissful. Uh, thank you for watching It's Your Health and allowing us to come into your homes and inform you, hopefully entertain you. Uh, Watch the 25 year review, you'll die laughing. Exactly, well, uh, and happy birthday, sweetheart. Many uh, thank more. Thank you. Many more. Adios, amigos, till next time, it's great being back on It's Your Health. Yes, it is. Thank you, Sammy. 